are you, man? I'm good. Yourself? Yeah, good, good. Thank you very much. It's the first time I've actually done a podcast where I'm actually sitting in front of somebody. Normally, I'm looking at a Skype machine, so this is uh-huh. nice. Good, good, good. And uh, thank you for bringing me to your amazing studio. You miss a nice coffee in our studio. You know what? I actually had a, I have an espresso at home, so I had two uh-huh. espressos before I come. So, uh, yeah, good coffee. Oh, very unprofessional. It's okay. <laughs> um Mate, I, you know, I, I reached out to you because um, I know you're a, a rebel photographer and stuff like that. And, you know, one of the, the big questions I always get asked is, hey, you know, how do you get a good a good photo of kite surfing? But I think before we get into that, let's, let's go back to the very beginning and say, you know, how did you get into photography and in general sports photography? Um, actually, I was born uh, next to the sea, Mediterranean, where everyone sail and everyone does uh, windsurfing and uh, surfing so um, and there is no way you can uh, you can avoid this you know so uh, so I start uh, early beginning doing bodyboarding but uh, we didn't have the board actually we used to do it on wood piece of wood and then we were, we used to wait someone coming from Australia or uh, because in Lebanon we don't have that time we don't have much uh, sports equipments and uh, and retails people who does this and uh, what happened is that uh, I bought my first bodyboard and then I started doing uh, windsurfing after uh, until I, uh, I was uh, asked to be, uh, to be like assistant to one photographer. And this is how everything started. Uh, I was driving and carrying uh, the bags. It was very hard. I learned the hard way, photography. And, uh, and then a few years after, I noticed that... Uh, I love photography and then uh, I do a lot of ski too in the mountain because we have a lot of resort back at home in Lebanon and then uh, and then the, the idea came photography and I do sport a lot of extreme sport myself so it's a good combination so uh, in the early beginning I, I was chasing Red Bull and then uh, they didn't give me a chance in the first two years and then I got my first uh, job with them and in 2004 and uh, this is where everything started again so uh, till now so so you are you're one of the 70 official red bull photographers um you know that sounds amazing but what how do you become one of these uh one of these guys is there a process That's, that you have to go through yeah yeah it's uh, it's many years actually it's not there is no stage or there is no like a, a ladder to 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 climb but uh um if you're good they will find you if you're doing great they will find you if there is potential in you they will find you themselves uh, actually what happened when i moved to dubai in 2006 uh by chance i i got the number of uh, of uh, the marketing and uh, uh, communication uh, in lebanon she was here and then i called her and she said yeah i have a fluke tag and this is where again i start with red bull here and you know uh, dubai is a platform an international platform for many 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 uh, business and many other things so uh, uh, i start uh, doing a job here in dubai after f- uh, two years uh, and every time you do any picture for Red Bull, it, it has to be uploaded to uh, to Austria. So they saw my work and they, they asked me to go for internship in 2009. And after 2009, Red Bull does something called Red Bull Photography. Uh, they did Red Bull Photography and then uh, I was chosen to be a Red Photographer uh, to present the, the brand. So yeah, and here we go. <laughs> Wow, that's incredible! And what, 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 what? You know, with this title, there must come some commitment. Um, obviously, you know, ex- Red Bull's associated with extreme sports. What, what's a first of all the commitment to uh, Red Bull, and secondly, what extreme sports have you have you taken or been asked to take photos of? Uh, uh, the, it's a big commitment actually, because the brand, you know, it's uh, leading worldwide. And uh, the image is very important for them, and they are big example for marketing for uh, for many 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 things. And big companies take uh, take uh, Red Bull as an example in their uh, marketing. So uh, yes, it's a big commitment. You have to travel. It's a uh, long hours working. It's uh, you, you. It's a big competition. It's a silent competition. So you always have to get the best shots because you will be uh, this this. This shot, if it's good, it can go really world, 
international you know it can go anywhere it's a big credit for you and then more you get more shot more you go better you be better and better and uh, yeah sometimes uh, you go the, the big actually the most difficult thing that uh, it's not always bright in the events you know sometimes it's super dark sometimes it's so difficult sometimes the location is not good the weather is not helping but you always have to deliver the best pictures and this is super difficult and and uh, what type of sports have you shot for them you know obviously um, uh, mm, you know, i mean red bulls and anything extreme you see red bull so what what events have you been to and what shorts uh, what sports have you been involved I, with i've been in mainly most of the sports uh, i do north africa asia middle east sometimes i did europe so uh, all kind of sport it depends on the demand like like i did uh, skiing I did uh, skydiving, I did uh, mo uh, motocross, I did Formula One a lot, I did uh, air race, uh, I did uh, climbing, I did uh, ah, actually all kinds of sports. And uh, obviously kite surfing being the main, uh, you know, the one that I've got you in touch, uh, got in uh, contact with you, Who, what kites have you shot? Uh, you know, you've done photos for and uh, I did the photos for uh, Ruben Lenton, yeah. and I did photos for Christopher Tack. I did uh, uh, photos for uh, Yuri Zun. I uh, uh, I've been doing for many others uh, all around the world. So whenever I travel, I meet uh, riders. I do shoot with them uh, in uh, Mauritius. I was riding this summer Mauritius too, and uh, uh, yeah, it's it's many many athletes. Yeah. Um, you know, before we get into how do you take a good photo, because I think that's what everyone wants to hear, how did you get involved in kite surfing and what, what brought you to this amazing sport? Because before you sang, originally you're really a, a windsurfer, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, when I came here and, you know, when, you, when you're in love with extreme sport and especially sailing and, and windsurfing, so you have to keep doing this. So when I moved to Dubai and I was, cha I was going all over the beach, uh, all the beach here, all over the coast, checking uh, what kind of sports. And then I used to see a lot of kite surfing. I never saw windsurfing. And I knew later that because of the wind. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have the, the extreme wind. And uh, windsurfing needs much more wind than uh, kite surfing. So I, I decided to try it. And then uh, I tried it and it took me few hours I was riding because you have a nice background and uh, so it's easy for you to understand I sail so I understand the wind direction and this is how I started kite surfing and then I fell in love with the sport it's funny because I, I know other guys who are you know ex-windsurfers and once they got into kiting they never touched their windsurfing gear again they just became in love, in love with kite surfing I mean, you know as a windsurfer and a kite surfer it's a lot easier to travel with kite gear versus windsurfing gear yeah yeah this is actually this is the main issue of windsurfing yeah. traveling so um, getting into the photography side of kite surfing, what, what is the first step if someone needs to take or wants to take a good photo of kiting? Because uh, I, I know that, you know, you, you go out there and, you, and it's very, very hard to capture that perfect shot. What, what would be step one if you were going to give someone some advice? Uh, to take a good shot, uh, it's, uh, look, photography, it's all about lighting. So you have to... Uh, not, I don't want to say practice, but um, you have to start seeing the angles uh, different way. And uh, you have to, and maybe in the first hundred or thousand picture you might fail, but this is not the, the issue. So you have to keep going. Uh, I, wa I want to talk about something in, uh, in kite surfing, which is very important. The kite surfing, it's, it's a transpar transparent material, and this will help a lot to catch a light, a backlight, and make it lit properly. So this is why I do most of the time. I use the sun to lit the kite and take pictures. And this worked like more or less opposite. You have to be opposite of the sun. And this is what I do to lit the kite all the time because it's transparent. And then the water, when you do splashes, is transparent too. So it, to, to lit it properly, it has to be backlit. And then the sun should be more or less from the back. And this is you start taking nice pictures. It's hard to do it by the phone. You need a lot of gears to do a nice pictures. You need a telezoom. You need a wide angle. So these two lenses, it's a must to have. Yeah, I mean, and the other thing as well, you know, most people are on 20-meter lines. You've got the person and the board. 
and then the kite's a whole different shot. And if you do want to get all of them in, again, you start getting that distance and you sort of lose the sort of, you know, the, close, the closeness of the shot. Yeah, if you if you if you all notice, because whoever loves kite surfing, he see, he sees a lot of uh, pictures and magazines everywhere. There is a lot of telezoom pictures. Why? Because you cannot take a picture when the kite on twelve, unless if you are doing something uh, aerial. But if you are on the ground, you cannot take a picture where the guy is, uh, his kite is on eleven or twelve. So you have to be more or less on ten nine something like that and use a telezoom what the, what does a telezoom it makes two objects close to each other it's not only making one object close it's make two objects so when you zoom the kite and the, the rider will be close to each other so you have to zoom fully zoom and when the kite will come to you the rider will come to you too and then recently i did with my phone a nice pictures and they look very close to each other so zooming is very important to make the, when you want to show the kite and the riders the best thing is to to use telezoom because to make two objects close to each other and you can make three objects close to each other if there is a nice background all of them will be compact will be it looks like you forget about this 23 meters line they will be close to each other okay and uh, so well let's let's talk about Obviously, for the general people, what, what would you suggest for basic gear? Obviously, you're a professional photographer, you know, you've got the best gear. But what about if someone wants to get into doing it? What's the basic gear they need? Um, uh, basic, basic, basic gear, uh, yes. Now there is, not all the cameras are super expensive. Now there is a lot of competition in the market. And you can get uh, a nice camera with decent price. Uh, if you want to go for a professional gear, it's super expensive. But now there is a digital zooming, which can take you 10,000 plus uh, closer you know so you can start with this and you can really take a nice shot so these cameras are not super expensive you need a telezoom you need minimum 200 to 400 millimeters and those digital cameras are not super expensive and they can get you there they are a bit slow but it's a good start I mean, I, 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 would, I would be hesitant to say, but I'd say 80% of the, the photography you see on Instagram must be taken on people's phones right how, how is the camera phone I mean, the camera phone, the quality of camera phones have, have, has come up a lot, you know. Uh, I use a lot my phone in my pictures because sometimes you don't have your camera and you see a nice, uh, like yesterday I was doing, I saw like amazing sky, beautiful cloud. And uh, I saw the, the, that the, 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 the kite has the same color at the, at the water and the sky. And behind it, there is a nice small sailing boat. So I had, I didn't have my camera. So... And I need to take this shot. And I took it and it was very nice. So what I did, uh, the phone performed very nice in the sun when there is nice light uh, for the wide angle. So uh, if you use it nicely and actually I asked the rider to put his kite down a little bit and then the picture went very well. You can do a lot with the phone. There is a mode like... Uh, uh, continuous shot in the in the phone so you can this will help you a lot to get a nice shot so you have to keep pressing on the phone and it will take many many shots and then later on you select which one you like you cannot like you don't have full control in the phone but you can really definitely uh, do a nice pictures and uh, what about uh, like using post-production you know Photoshop or or whatever they use on their phones these days, you know, there's many different apps to enhance the photo. Where, where do you draw the line at, you know, really overdoing the colors? You know, so you see some people, they, they really use their filters a lot and ah, the, the shots look good, but they look too overproduced. Yes, this is the biggest problem actually in everywhere. And now in digital uh, era, you can call it. Uh, too much exaggeration in their uh, post-production. Uh, they change the structure of the image. It become like aggressive. Uh, the, 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 the color doesn't exist the way they do, you know? It's, uh, it's too much exaggeration. So what I do, actually, post-production is very important. It's super important. It's nice to, to play with the colors, but don't exaggerate it, you know? Some of them, they really push it like crazy, and it become like, Almost as like as a, I told almost you, like a painting. Yeah, painting. So this is why if you if you check all my image, it's really simple. I play on the colors yellow, blue. It's what, what which color I have in the image. I focus on them and try to put a little bit on contrast. And this is what I do. Yeah, I mean, I guess 
The other question that I get asked a lot is, is, is using a GoPro. Now, I mean, everybody I know has a GoPro, but it's very, very hard to get that good shot of a GoPro. Now, I don't know, you know, if you go onto the GoPro uh, website, you look at their images and their videos, they look incredible. And, you know, when you, you go out and you go riding with using a mouth mount or a line mount or whatever, you come home, it doesn't look anything like, it doesn't even look anything <laughs> like you hoped. Um, how, what, what sort of tips can you give people to A, improve their GoPro shots and B, uh, use their GoPro correctly because I think those are quite important things. Uh, yes, Go look GoPro. It's like uh, for me, it's the, like a super nice uh, camera to use. But you know, you should know how to use it and for what. Sometimes you want to show the the track, so you put it uh, on your mouse or you put it on the on the steering, and then you show the track. If you want to, if there is, you want to show the track. But if you want to show yourself. The GoPro doesn't work unless you have at least one meter away from you. So then you start getting a nice shot. You cannot put it on like on on the steering and you are like 10 centimeters away. You're going to be distorted. You, you can't see anything. And this is where the, the, the footage doesn't, it's not, it's not uh, like, uh, it's not good. So... Uh, so what I do usually, I uh, I try to see wh wh what kind of sport I do and uh, where is the best place to put it. Like I was skiing last year in the mountain and we had like amazing uh, powder day and then I want to take a nice shot and I'm alone. So uh, the GoPro is your photographer actually or the videographer. So I found the stick. It's the best to use the, the to put it on the stick. So I put it on my ski stick, and it was like one and a half meter away from me. And then the image went super nice. Like I'm still using it till now. So the best way is to put it on the kite. It's amazing too to see the landscape, to see the places. But don't ever put it like on the helmet. So who are you? What are you doing? Where are you? Uh, you know, it it will show only landscape and then moving left and right. So for me. Uh, GoPro equal uh, uh, equal like I don't know how to say it, but to, to get the best shot from GoPro, you should know where to put. You have to be super smart to to put it uh, away from you in a nice place and get the best shot. Yeah, it's funny. I mean, I use a mouth mount most of the time, or I sometimes carry it with a pole. But the problem is, when it's so close to the water, it gets covered in splashes. And how many times you look? Oh, I've got that. That, that would have been amazing. And then you look at the thing. There's a big water drop in the middle of the. Of the, uh, of the camera you know it's a bit of a so maybe getting it higher out, gets it out of the way of the splashes and stuff you can you can get uh, rid from the, the the splashes there is now many ways to to put like some cream on the yep. screen that this will all the the, the drops will be yeah. will be slides uh, you know I, I do the old classic lick every now and then you know? oh yeah this <laughs> helped this helped too <laughs> but um yeah what what about um if you know if you could actually what about like we talked about getting into some cheap gear, what what would you suggest as a as a brand? What brands do you use? What lenses do you use? Because I've I know a lot of people are getting more into photography. It's, I mean, it's becoming so popular now to take take sports photography. Uh, what, what would be a brand that you would suggest? Actually, um, when I start photography, actually twenty one years ago, uh, I was uh, with Nikon, and I'm still with Nikon. Uh, and then I, actually, I love Nikon a lot. I don't want to do a, an advertising for them because they are super active. So they are all the time in the market. They are all the time up to date. They give you best gear every year. You're, you're looking forward to get what they are doing. And then oof, they come up with something. Wow. Especially the latest D850, which I, it replaced my Hasselblad. I'm not using any more Hasselblad, which is one of the most expensive medium format camera and then I'm, I replace it with the 850 which is 10% from the p price from the Hasselblad which, because, uh, and because they are always like active and they always like they want to show better and better and to show the SLR in a better way. Uh, I use, I have lenses, uh, I've been collecting lenses since I was a kid and I have from 600 to 8 millimeter, from 8 millimeter to 600 millimeters. And uh, yeah, when you want to do something professionally, you should have all this is serious. So what about uh, the, when you're looking at Nikon models, what, what would be the bottom of the range which which you, where you're going to start getting that good photo with a lens? You know, can you buy, can I just go into a camera shop and buy a, 
you know, a three hundred dollar camera, take it home, put a lens on it, and, and get no, a good shot. No, you can go and get your uh, D seven hundred fifty, and it's not. It's a medium range camera. Uh, it depends. Look, if you want to go, if 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 you want to start, you cannot start with any camera, because anyone has a camera. He can start before buying any camera using his phone, which phone gives you. Some many people I know they do amazing picture with phone. So if they, if they went to to camera, they will do the same because they have the eye. It's all about how to see things. So if you want to start somehow. You cannot start with uh, with a, a very cheap camera, you know. So you have to go for a medium camera, affordable. I'm talking about few thousand only, and you can get amazing picture. You can start with D800, D D750. You can start with a second hand camera, and then there is so many now cameras in the market, and all of them actually most you can do. You can do good with all cameras. Yeah, and so. and and the, to get a good lens is important. Lenses is half of the pictures. Yeah. Uh, uh, still, you can start with a normal lens, but you cannot complain if you are shooting at night. This will not help you. So, if you're shooting daytime, any lens can work. Of course, you can. Like, 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 the clarity is not the best, but you can even tell. You know. Yeah. So you can start with any lens. Uh, and then you can go slowly, slowly, and this is how we all started. Um, they didn't buy the best uh, equipment in the beginning. And, and you know, it's funny. Like it's, it's you know, you, we talk about getting that that importance of getting that perfect picture, but most people are putting it on Instagram where they're looking at it on a phone. It's not gonna, you're not even gonna notice it, really, are you? Sorry, sorry, I didn't. I, I said most people are taking photos. Yes. Just, even if they're using a nice camera, they're just putting it on Instagram, and 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 with a small screen, you're, most people are looking on their handheld devices. They're not gonna see those discrepancies in the photo yeah yeah of course uh and on uh, but now now you can actually okay actually i'm correcting you now what happened now with the with the instagram you can start zooming and this can give you a lot idea like uh, how this shot has been done what ha how they did it the post-production and oh. then uh, if you keep it as it is any pictures like it? Oh, it looks nice. But when you zoom in, you start know what they did. Actually, you don't need to zoom. Any picture you can tell easily if it was post production. And uh, and sometimes I put pictures. If I do post production for fun with my friend, I write this. I manipulate it or Photoshop because I'm uh, many. I'm I'm known in many in Europe and anywhere in, among the photographer. I cannot put something without mentioning if it was manipul manipulated or Photoshop. So, uh, yeah, sometimes it's good to have fun yeah. with Photoshop. Well, what, what's next for you, mate, with kite surfing and Red Bull? I mean, what, what, what sort of future products have you, guys, uh, have you got sort of planned? I, uh, with Red Bull, actually, I've been working for a big project now for I'm doing uh, the whole athlete photo shoots, uh, maybe 10 athletes with some uh, video things. And uh, next, uh, it's two days ago, it, it became official. I'm going for a workshop and I'm doing workshop for photographer in Japan, in Tokyo, uh, next month. And uh, looking forward for that. I've never been in Japan. And then uh, we have the air race. Uh, I have an, a lot of special projects, which I like a lot. I did one, it's going to be... Uh, uh, it's gonna be online uh, in the mid of this month, January. Uh, yeah, it's always always busy with Red Bull. It's yeah. Always busy. And uh, with, with kite surfing, where are your favorite places to shoot? I mean, where, for example, we were just talking about Mazera. Now, I've been down. You know, I've been to Mazera. It's a crazy place to shoot, and I know you guys have made a, a lot of movies there and videos and done a lot of photos. What makes Mazera so special as a place to? Uh, take uh, take kite surfing photography in ge uh, in general, you know. Uh, Masira, it's a special, super special island. Uh, why? Because you have everything there. You have from fl flat water to three meters wave, and uh, another good thing that the the season it's like four or five months nonstop. It's a uh, monsoon season, so uh, actually we don't check the forecast. We just go there. What make it special for uh, photography? Many things. You are super close to the action things happening next to you and uh, the shallow water can help a lot the photographer so uh, you can walk all the way in the lagoon checking the sun direction you want this angle you just walk there some location with deep water it's so hard and uh, you need to have either long lens or you have to be in the water 
to take picture and shooting in the water after a while it's repetitive same things wide angle kite somebody jumping above you you cannot be like uh, very creative so when you be on the shore you can play with your lenses you can take different background you can take different uh, you know so masira it help a lot because of the white sand because of the crystal blue water because of the clear weather because of the cloud because of the mountain around and uh, so this and uh, a uh, lot of things happening around like lot of uh, i last year i did amazing shot with the seagulls i don't know if you saw it on my instagram yeah for sure so this is something i was i actually i saw it one day before and i decided to do it next day so uh, i asked my friend to go there sometimes it's not but sometimes you do picture by chance sometimes you stage it yeah. so i i staged that one and i asked him to go to right this direction and then uh, this time and then we have the sun in the background and i know that seagulls never left from this location so we will, for sure we can guarantee seagulls and then when he passed the seagull fly and then the sun in the background and uh, it was amazing magical pictures yeah well as a photographer how do you balance between especially on Mazera, it's, it's a long way to go to get there how do, what, what do you balance from right, I'm going to take photos for an hour, then I'm going to go and ride. Because as a kite surfer, you know, sometimes you just want to get on the water, right? I just want to get out there and ride. And you don't care about your friends, anything. You just want to get out and ride. So how do you balance between taking a photo or taking photos and riding and then getting the photos you want? I mean, there has to be a bit of a... Wherever I go to shoot kite surfing, I ride too. Yeah. There is no way I, can, I, I, I will not ride, you know? But how I do it? Usually it depends. There is always time. We are, you never shoot like eight hours or 10 hours in a row. Uh, uh, especially when you are f chasing the light properly. So there is uh, perfect moments, and we always shoot in a perfect moment. Unless, like, noon time, from, usually from 11 till 2.30, 3, I don't shoot, unless if I'm doing aerial, because this is the best time to get a clear water. There is no reflection from the sun. So if you're shooting aerial, the best time to shoot from 11 till 2, 3, because the sun is like 90 degree with the water, so it's super clear. It doesn't make any reflection. Once it moves left or right, the sun, you start having the highlight on the water, which is not good. So uh, this time, if I'm not shooting aerial, this is the best time for me to ride. And uh, during the sunset and before sunset where the light is very nice, so usually I don't ride. Uh, if there is any opportunity to take picture, I will take pictures. Fantastic. Well, Noam, thank you very much for uh, for having me, bro. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you for bringing me to your studio. And, uh, mate, let's hope... Looking can... forward. Let's... See you in the water yeah, for sure. Yeah, let's get out there for sure. Yeah, yeah. Right, May, bro. May is coming soon. Can't wait. See you, bro. Okay. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Have a nice day.